What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Dirt Castle for the next episode of This War of Mine. I'm gonna try and, we've never distilled alcohol, so in staying in tune with kind of like the thing that we're trying to do right here, I'm gonna make some pure alcohol, we'll see how it goes. I don't know how long that's gonna take, I assume that, I mean, some like some moonshine is very, very pure actually. I feel like moonshine is always used as a bit of like a perjurative term sometimes to describe liquor that's not well made. But there are people, like the moonshine they make is absolutely fantastic. We got moonshiners around here in California that occasionally make it. It'll show up. It'll show up in little glass like mason jars every now and again. I had a friend that got it from a friend at a party a couple years back and I tried it. It'll it'll put some hair on your chest. It's got some, that white lightning's definitely got a little bit of, it's got some oomph to it. It'll definitely make you breathe fire. You'll be feeling like a dragon after you swallow that stuff. But I think this system right here would just be to add further distillation, wouldn't it? So you would actually boil the mash over here. So the basic way that this works from how I understand it is that you take the mash, which will be corn or anything with sugar inside of it. You put it in a wa you put it basically into a boiler. So with water and then you heat it and you just let it sit there and cook for super long. And then what should happen right there is eventually the mash sit no, the mash sits there, the mash ferments and then after that you boil it and you cook it, I think. I think you just leave it in a big bucket thing for a while and then it ferments while it sits there. Then you take it and you put it into a big it looks like this thing right over here, this little tank. And you set a fire under it, and then it'll boil, and you've got a pipe that runs. It's a distillation. That's what distillation is, is you're actually purifying a liquid, or at least you're trying to pull the chemical constituents out in a stronger variety by boiling it, and then it, the, the steam will go up a tube, and it drips out the other end, and that'll actually purify it on out eventually. Or I think the alcohol does, actually, because the alcohol burns off at a lower temperature than the water does, or something like that. I'm not too I bet I could do it if I fiddled around with it for a weekend. I bet I could do it. My family, <laughs> everybody in my family is kind of like that. We tinker with things. We fiddle with things on weekends. Things we ought, like for example, my family last couple weekends, we spent time affixing two-stroke motors to various objects and just like seeing what we could make. And it turned out pretty awesome. It turned out pretty awesome. We made a bunch of like mini motorcycles, like with a bunch of old beat up bikes that we found out. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty epic. Let's see here. Well, I don't know if I want to do the military outpost thing. However, we could go back to the shelled school. See if we can get into trouble there. Let's try. Let's go back to the shelled school and see how much mayhem we can cause over here. I'll bring one of the shotties with me just in case this gets out of control. I don't know how many bullets I should bring, but we're going to go shotgun murder on these people because we can. Even though they count as innocents. I said I was going to do a nice guy playthrough, but I'm bored at this point and I just want to kill people, so... You does what you gotta does. Now if we get rushed straight out of the gate here. You're supposed to see that dialogue right there the first time you come in. And it'll let you know that these guys aren't bad guys or whatever. I think I'm just gonna hustle for it. She doesn't make any noise, so we should- No, don't bang that door though. You bang that door, we're going to get ourselves into trouble. Alright, so let's see what we can steal here. Close that off. I think I left this door open too, but I'm going to go up and over the top because I like it better. It makes me feel good. How close do you have to be for the shotgun to work? I assume you kind of have to be like a little bit close. I don't know. I forgot to bring a melee weapon with me. So technically, we can't really, like, murder anybody at this point. We'll see if he tries to come up here, if he sees us or not. Oh, he didn't. Okay. Well, then we're going to go down and we're going to loot. So there it is. All of this stuff is now my stuff. Oh, he can see me through the floor. That's not good. Alright. Well, I'm just going to keep it low to the ground at this point. Anything that we can bring back with us, though, is appreciated. Hopefully this dude doesn't wake up. If this dude wakes up, we're going to be in deep doo-doo. I mean, this door should be unlocked, I think. Some weapon parts right there. Technically, I could wait in here until he goes out there. Oh, God, that was almost close. Okay, so this dude's going out the back right now. This seems like the kind of location where you could definitely get yourself killed on accident. Just by like messing up and going the wrong way and running into somebody with a shotgun or something.
Let me see what I can get out of here. I'm still not, like, positive if they still move around, like, while you're looting. If anybody could answer that question for me, that would be actually really great. I don't think they still move around while you're looting, but just in case. Just in case. Now, down here, there's a meat. There's basically, there's, like, a whole bunch of classrooms over here for the little kids, and there's all kinds of stuff in them. I'm assuming that if I can murder somebody back in there, we should be alright. Can you shotgun somebody from this corner? You can't? Okay, I was going to say, it'd be kind of cool if you could, but... I guess not. That guy's going to go back downstairs. I don't trust this guy not to wake up. Yeah, let's go for it. Do some gangster shit right now. Steal from somebody while they sleep. Oh, right. oh my god. Okay, so... Dump all the wood. Oh, they got a bunch of liquor, too. Hmm. Hold on. Get rid of everything here. We don't need, like, any of this. I just want the liquor. Yeah! Liquor thief. Da -na 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 -na. I don't know why the liquor thief has the James Bond theme. Please don't sue me, James Bond. I would prefer not to be sued today. Like, it's so terrifying being on the internet. You never know. Like, if I sang the Happy Birthday song right now, like, the people that own the Happy Birthday song are, like, super, super vicious about, like copyright pursuing people about that's why you never see the happy birthday song in movies it's because the family that owns the happy birthday song they sue people all the time that is definitely not in the birthday spirit i do not accept that i was gonna say i was gonna talk about something oh yeah so anyways in the previous episode i said that they i hope they didn't have a pistol in the gut for me i went to talk to my neighbor the other night because we moved into this complex and i like to be on good terms with my neighbors so what i do and just like a little life hack right here it's like, hit your neighbors up, introduce yourself, and I gave them, like, a little sticky note or, like, my business card where they can just, like, call me. And I write on it. I'm just like, hey, if I'm ever making too much noise or if I'm making a racket, call me. Don't call the police. It's all good. Like, I'm a super chill neighbor. If I'm making too much noise and it's keeping you awake, just call me. And I promise you, I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to, like, want to argue with you or anything. I'm, I'm down with being chill with my neighbors. Like, it's way easy. It's better to have a good relationship with your neighbors than a bad one. And so I realized he was being hella standoffish when I went up. And I was, like, I kind of eyeballed him. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. You didn't take your hands out of your pockets the whole time you were up here. It was the middle of the night, too. It was like 8 o'clock at night, but still. He thought I had a gun or something. I was going to rob him when he came out of his house. I'm like, oh, no, dude, I'm not trying to rob you. I'm your neighbor. That would be, like, the most egregious breaching of the don't shit where you eat rule. First and foremost, even if I was a criminal. Like, seriously, you would be the worst criminal ever if you robbed the guy that lived across the hall from you. Like, where are you going to go? Like, seriously? <laughs> There are basic criminal tenets here that I'm assuming that most criminals will adhere to. And that one right there is pretty major. And don't shit where you eat. But no, I'm not going to shoot you, man. But he was hella paranoid. He was super jumpy. I don't blame him. I mean, our neighborhood is... What's weird is that, like, I don't know. Our rent is through the roof. To give you some ideas, like, you can't live in the Bay Area for under 1300 a month in rent. Like, a nice apartment in an area... I mean, a nice apartment in an area where things still happen is probably around 1300 but it'll be a nice apartment, and there'll be, like, considerably less shootings than in, like, some of the cheaper, like, Section 8 housing neighborhoods. Honestly, it's hard to get into it. The other problem is that everything in California that's under a certain rent amount is Section 8 housing. And if you don't know what Section 8 housing is, Section 8 housing is basically, like, welfare housing, which means that before you can live there, you have to file, because it's run by the government. So before you can live in that apartment complex, you have to file paperwork showing that you live below the poverty line. And if you don't live below the poverty line, you've got to get on a waiting list. If you live before, below the poverty line, then you get on a waiting list. But that waiting list is a priority waiting list that allows you to have the place because you have no money. And so it's kind of like Section 8 housing tends to be like really, really, really rough around the edges. So even if you're below the poverty line, a lot of people, I think, pay a little bit of a higher rent or at least a lot of bit of a higher rent in California just so they don't have to hear gunshots clicking off every single day. When they get out of bed. There we go. So we've got 32 right there. I could probably make this work a little bit better. Let me even this out with cigarettes. There we go. I'd rather... You can use the cigarettes. So think of cigarettes as quarters. Instead of like using full dollars. You can use the cigarettes to get a much better deal. And get much closer to the absolute value of the things that you're trading for. He's actually got a lot of stuff on him. I'm a little bit surprised how much he has. Usually he doesn't bring this much with him, so I'm going to try and, like, get while the getting's good. Just, like, a series of small trades just to, like, make this go quicker. 
Got that. I'll probably try and just clean him out right now. Because we can go back and we can steal more liquor. It's not a big deal. Like, there's liquor everywhere. Additionally, we have way too many pills, so we can trade those too. As for right now, though, let me see what I can get out of two of these real fast. No, I don't want your liquor. Trading liquor for better liquor. Yeah. I'm probably just going to try and clean him out of everything he has right now so that we can continue to moonshine and do our thing. There we go. We've got all of that. Get rid of those last two liquors. And see if maybe we can land ourselves a little bit of water, maybe some weapon parts, maybe an extra plank or two. There we go. Now we can use the pills to trade for further tobacco. Okay, so for two pills, we can get close. Let me get rid of some of the bad quality cigarettes here. Bad quality cigarettes aren't making it happen. Okay, so there it is. We'll trade that out, and that'll let us make like a... Did I say not to complete it? I didn't say I was wasting... Oh, man. Hold on. I must have clicked the wrong thing. There we go. So now, we'll throw the pills in there. Let me even this out with some ciggies. There we go. Awesome. And then, let me see what else he has, too, because honestly, I'd like to clear him out. If he has other useful things, I will take them. He's got weapon parts, but I think we're good for right now. Let me go ahead and send him on his way. That's going to end the day for us. And then we need to get back to making ourselves a few more cigarettes since we just bought a whole bunch of cigarette making supplies. So off we go. Trading up for cigarettes is actually a really good plan. If you can manage it and if you have the downtime with four people, having somebody that just makes cigarettes all day every day, you can trade completed cigarettes for more than the net value of uncompleted cigarettes. And so basically... One tobacco turns into four cigarettes. The four cigarettes are worth more than the one tobacco. So technically, you're getting like a small increment of trade each time that you go through. So for example, if you turn 10 heads of tobacco into 40 cigarettes, you probably gained about 10 cigarettes worth of value right there. And so now, if you don't have smokers in your group, which is rare, but if you don't have smokers in your group, you can then provision those and use them to keep trading upwards. It's basically like a currency that builds itself in this game. And I don't think a lot of people realize that like it's actually a pretty good way to get ahead in the game by trading cigarettes. I would strongly consider it. This workbench over here is undervalued. It's actually pretty good. The only problem is that they stopped you from doing that by making most of the characters smokers. So if you front stock and build a bunch of cigarettes, you tend to get yourself into a lot of trouble because they smoke them all up every single day. You can go through 36 cigarettes in between traders pretty easily. Alright, let's get going on these. So 44 quality roll-ups, or nice roll-ups anyways. He's going to go downstairs and probably do whatever, but it seems like for the remainder of today... Actually, you swap out that filter real fast while everybody else is working, because honestly, the game should end in the next day or two, I think. It said two weeks from, like, day 30, but it's almost day 44, so I think we're actually going to be pretty close to that estimation. I think we're going to be really, really close. We're going to have a good supply of cigarettes to enter into the new world, too. We're doing fairly well at the moment. Nobody finished that liquor up there either. Bruno, go finish that liquor. You are like the liquor king. The liquor lich. The liquor... I don't know. What's a title that starts with L? Hmm. I don't know. I got nothing. I got nothing that starts with an L. I can't make it alliterative. I failed. I failed, senpai. Anyways. We'll have him finish off making all this liquor. Of, did I actually make 10 liquor? That seems really unlikely. What is he cooking right now? Ten liquor seems like a lot of purified liquor. Either way, we'll check our inventory when we finish it off. I don't know. We're gonna steal some more liquor from that other place, and we'll try and we'll try and build it on up pretty soon. It looks like we don't get in trouble as long as we don't hurt anybody there. It'll let us steal from them, but it won't let us. Oh, so wait, ten normal liquor? Did I make the wrong thing right there? Oh my god! I hope I didn't do the wrong thing, but it's sure starting to look like I did the wrong thing. Why did it give us ten normal liquor? Is it because I, I... Oh, no, never mind. It's just the bottle looked the same. They need to fix that. That's a bug. It showed the the moonshine bottle instead of the purified liquor bottle. Now we got stuff we could play with. Let me go down here and we'll check that other... Where's our other weed bench over here? I'm sure we can make band-aids or something out of it at this point. I'd like to at least try and craft some of the other stuff that I've never done before, but with 11 purified alcohol, it's like, what do we even need anymore? Actually, yeah, I might turn those into fertilizer since we're not really, like, making anything anyways. If you turn them into fertilizer, I think they'll be a little bit more valuable. Is it going to be the end of the day? Let's find out. The end of the war. You never know. 
Oh, we're still in. Okay, well, I'm going to take her back out to scavenge then. I'll put him on guard and I'll let him sleep since he's got to cook in the morning. We'll go to the shelled school and see what we can steal. I'm going to bring some lockpicks with me just in case. I'll bring a weapon too. In the off chance we get pinned, actually, I could bring a knife and that would work out okay. Work out a little bit better, I think. Probably bring some bullets too. I'm not planning on killing people here, but if we have to, we have to. All right, let's sneak back into the building. Is there anybody in here? There's two somebody's in there. Hopefully he's going to sit down in this chair and not come out this way. Comes out this way, we're going to have a fairly considerable problem. Okay, well let's have her... Actually, if she can just go straight through this way, because this guy leaves. Yeah, he bailed. See what you can find in here. And if we have to run, we have to run, but either way, loot the hell out of this thing. Two more liquor. Probably take the sugar, the water. She's all out of space already. What's in this spot right here out of curiosity? Medication. Take that instead. There we go. And then we'll just get up out of here. That's actually, this place is pretty good if you just steal from it. I mean, I don't know. Killing people seems to be my MO a lot of the time because I'd rather not take the chance of them, like, snooping in on me while I'm cornered in a room. That tends to be what I'm worried about, but did we complete it? Usually you don't. Do you get that loading screen every time? I don't remember. Day 41. We're still not out of here. We are stuck. We are stuck in Pagoran. I figure we keep looting that place. I mean, after this, it's going to get a little bit more dangerous. Just because we've got to go down into the bottom floors, which increases my chances of having to murder somebody. Let's get him going. We'll have him swap the water filter out real fast. And then, oh, go down to the bottom floor then. There we go. Swap that water filter. Bim, bam, bam. I'll probably have him make two more purified alcohols. I mean, with this stack of alcohol right here, we have so much in-game money, quote-unquote, or whatever. I don't know why I've been saying quote-unquote so much lately. I should stop. I don't like that phrase, and for some reason I've been using it. We have so much in-game currency right now, i.e. alcohol, that I'm not really too concerned. Oh, we're out of fuel? Well, then hell. Make some more fuel, amigo. There we go. Make us a whole bunch of fuel. By the time they wake up, it should be okay. I don't think we're going to get anybody around here. Ooh, we actually need the fuel to get our furnace up and running, too. Looks like the temperature decided to drop out on us. It's not too bad. I'll probably go back tonight and we'll get back to like stealing and like looting with Erica if we can because that's what I'd prefer. I don't know what I'm going to stream tonight. It's a stream night. I'm not going to say what... Well, it doesn't matter. It's a Wednesday. But it's a stream night and I don't know what I want to stream tonight. I think I've just about burned out Neo Scavenger on the stream and I'm not sure where I want to go with this from here on out. Haven't really decided. I may try and give... I don't know. I might do Lichdom. I might have Lichdom be there for us. I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I, I want to play Lich. There's a bunch of games that I have right now that I want to play on the stream, but I just haven't had a chance because I've been like knee-deep in Neo Scavenger. And so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Alright, a little bit of fuel getting made right there. After that finishes up, we will have him make us some dinner. There you go. Once that's all squared away, we'll have them start working on making more cigarettes, finishing off the fertilizer just in case they come through with some of these traps down here. And after that, we'll probably start swapping in some fuel as well to make sure that we don't freeze to death because that is an actual, like, real concern right now. I would rather not have people all cataclysmically get sick at the end of the game, even though we more than have enough supplies to deal with it. Alright, he's fed. We'll get him going. Actually, restock the furnaces for right now. I don't want to leave people cold. Put, like, four in there, and we'll just kind of see how that ends. You get going with the fertilizer. He'll wake up, and after he wakes up, we'll get him going with the cigarettes. That should be more than enough heat. Yeah, I was going to say. That'll put us up to, like... Well, I mean, it's not super warm. It's like 17 degrees Celsius. You double it at 32, and it's like 70 degrees in there. It's not too bad. Could be worse. I wish they would eat the meals on their own when they're hungry, too. But I could see how that might become obnoxious when you're trying to organize things if they would go and eat like a meal on accident you know like on a day where they didn't need to be fed I could see that becoming troublesome but still at the same time they do so many other things just like in an automated sense that it'd be nice if they continue to I don't think we're gonna get any events today so I may just bypass the day 
so that we can get back out there and start stealing again. Stealing all that we know the peacekeepers are coming. You gotta get it in before the law returns. You gotta get it in before the law returns. Alright, so I'm gonna keep having her scavenge. I'll put Boris on guard right now. We'll go back to the shelled school and see what we can get out of it. Let's see here. I'll probably just bring a... I don't know. I always feel nervous about, like, going into places like this without being strapped with my main scavenging group. It just seems like this entire building is a death trap. You can get yourself cornered in a room, and when that happens, you're going to need guns. You're going to need a lot of guns. Just to make this work. There is some stuff still remaining on this top floor. I'm not going to concern myself with it, though. Instead, wow, she can slam through doors and everything without making noise? She's the best. I bet there's something good over there behind that debris pile, but we haven't gotten to it yet. Ooh. I don't want him to see me. If he sees me, this is going to be troublesome. It's going to cause us some issues if he sees me. We will definitely have to suffer slightly. If he goes out there, he might be worth taking out. I don't know. Eh, let's take him out. Save myself a little bit of trouble later. Okay, so that's down. Upstairs we go. If they start looking around, there is going to be a gunfight up here because I'm actually going to try and stand my ground today. So if they start looking around, I'm going to give them the old pucka pucka pucka. Make sure nobody comes up behind me because I am concerned about that. Ow! How dare you! Asshole! Yeah, I don't think he wants to come up here. Look what just happened to your amigo. Just bear that in mind. How horribly this can go for you right now. Does he have a firearm? If he does... Ow. Oh, he's got me outranged. Okay, run. Run, 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 run. Get out of there. Oh, she's too wounded. She's not going to make it. Shit. See, this is what happens when I get bored. This kind of stuff happens when I'm bored. Oh, well. I don't really care that much. It was fun. And I'm getting, like, super bored. And so it's either that or I can cancel the series and just be like, eh. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Erica was killed while looking for supplies. There's definitely too many people. I didn't realize the pistol had that range. That was actually my miscalculation right there. I thought the pistol had less of a range than the shotgun, which is how I messed that one up. Doesn't really matter. I told you these were the two options. I was either going to have to, like... Let's see here. He's tired. Go to bed. I was either going to have to, like, sabotage myself in the end to keep myself entertained. Or, you know, have a good playthrough. And I think I'd rather keep myself entertained. Well, technically, Erica killed a lot of them like dogs, too. I should have got her out of there. We should have assassinated one at a time and then just kept messing with them time by time. But I wanted to hold my ground and just, like, see what you could handle. If you're wondering why I didn't shoot more, there's a delay. So unless you're unless the little cursor when you're shooting people with a gun is orange, you're going to miss. It won't deal damage. And so you've got to wait until it turns orange again before you can fire again. I probably could have had her take cover, maybe? I don't know. I don't know how I could have played that differently. I try to stay out of the mainline combat in this game. Like I said earlier when Roman died. Either way, food supplies just got easier. Yay! I'm actually, meh, not a big deal to me. You guys know that I could have rode this out by ending days with all four people with Roman from like 10 days ago. So, I'm just playing around with the game right now, trying to learn something. And I've never gone after that building before. Now I kind of know how I would approach it next time if I wanted to take it out. With two people, things definitely get interesting. It definitely gets a little bit more hype. The problem with Erica, I guess, is her low HP. I should have given her a bullet vest or something before she went in there. The different characters have different amounts of health, and she actually took a lot of damage from the pistol. More than I expected. Alright, so that's all good right there. Oh, I never upgraded this? What do I need to upgrade this? More wood? Hmm. Okay, well, I guess I'm not going to upgrade everything in the game then. I think I messed up. I'll have him swap out the traps downstairs real fast. But yeah, I like to try like new things with my playthroughs every now and again because I get bored when I get to this point. Like, look how much food and stuff we have. Like, I could just end days until we finish the game, but I would rather like fiddle around with things and see what locations have. 
So consider those exploratory scientific deaths. Deaths for science. We go downwards here. Yeah, I could have easily avoided all of those deaths by just not going there, which is what I would have done if I wasn't getting bored on the back end of the game. Once you run out of things to scavenge, I tend to play a little bit, like, goofy and risky and get people killed and stuff. I feel like I need to explain this because, like, people will say that I'm a shitty player or something, and I'm like, eh. That kind of went according to plan, to be honest. I mean, she was supposed to survive, but I learned something about the pistol. Basically, I was fiddling around with the real combat because, eh, we're at the end of the game anyways, and I just kind of want to see what can happen. If I have to get us killed down to one person at the end, but I still learn something so that when I go and play by myself, like tomorrow afternoon, that's fine by me. It doesn't hurt my feelings at all. Obviously not real people. If they were real people, I'd play it way safer. But then again, why would I be like radio controlling real people through a video game? That begs a lot of questions. It's got kind of like a running man tinge to it. It's day 42. Let's go ahead and we're just going to end the day. Oh, there it is. <laughs> she died before. The oh, man. She died the day before the war ended. Ain't that a bitch. What's up with this on the sides right here? What's up with that? Oh, well. We murdered somebody on the first day. Oh, God. I forgot about that. Day one. Blood on our hands. Roman killed another civilian. Technically, she was shotgunning people in the other courtyard, so eh. A sniper's victim. We helped a neighbor's brother who got wounded by a sniper. We saved a girl from a drunken soldier. She got nice arms. She got like she got guns. You can tell she works out. Just from the way her arm is right there. She got guns. Anyways, buried alive. The shell hit a nearby tenement, and so people were trapped under the rubble. Erica helped pull them out. Our neighbor felt unsafe and asked us to help her. Board up her windows, and we did that. The grateful daughter brought us the earrings from her mother. Roman died on day 27. Erica killed a bandit. So why does that count as blood on her hands? Hmm. A desperate cry for protection. A, fa a frightened neighbor asked us to protect her from bandits and Erica agreed to help her. Erica was killed while looking for supplies. And then the war is over right after that. The long-awaited ceasefire finally came into force, putting an end to the fighting in Pagora, and those who managed to survive the war in Grisnavia would never forget it. Alright, so there it is. Boris managed to see the end of the war and tried to put his life back together, mostly to no avail. The memory of his son and girlfriend's fate haunted him until the end of his days. After the ceasefire, Bruno looked for his friend, and he doesn't find her, do they? Oh no, never mind, it's different this time. Last time he didn't find her. He set off looking for his friend. Her neighborhood saw heavy fighting and the majority of housing had been reduced to ruins, but she found shelter in a basement, which somehow held. Despite the hardship, she managed to survive. It was happy to see Bruno alive as well. They remain friends to this day. As so many other Tough as Nails guys, Roman didn't make it. His motivations will remain unknown to his buddies, and some of them still think he betrayed them. Tough girl as she was, Erica died. Harsh reality of living in a ghetto could not be compared to the horrors of war. What would have become of her if she had survived? We'll never know. There it is. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerdcastle for the final episode of This War of Mine 1.2. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody, and I do.